the gospel of the Lord. Maybe should have said that. Obviously, the context for that reading from John we've just heard was the feeding of the 5,000, which we had a week ago. So have that sort of image in your mind as you hear that uh, discourse from John. But let's start a little bit uh, more remote. Exa exactly uh, 500 years ago. No, I don't remember it well. <laughs> but... Jesuits do, because this was the cannonball moment, okay? And some of you may be nodding. I said, I know all about the cannonball moment. That was when, in 1521, on May the 20th, so even the date is well known, Ignatius Loyola was in battle defending the citadel of the Pamplona against the French. And he was hit with a cannonball that struck his right leg and broke it and injured his left leg. Oh my, that's the cannonball moment. Ignatius was 30 years old at the time of Loyola. He came from the, the family of Loyola who had their own castle. Um, this is in northern Spain we're, we're talking about. And so after a, a little time at Pamplona recovering, and the French helped him recover, the, that was the nature of the battles then. Um, he recovered enough about a month later to go back to Loyola. But the surgeons who had set his leg hadn't done a very good job of it. So it was short shorter than the other. So he'd always walk through life with a limp. Now, he was, you know, a proud courtier. You know, he was a man of stature, all of five foot two inches. And he, he wouldn't put up with, you know, a limp for the rest of his life. So despite the pain, of having his leg broken again and reset so at the right length. That's what he went through. Exactly. Oh. And, okay, it took him a good while to recover in his you know, home castle of Loyola, as you can imagine. And he got a bit bored and asked what there was to read. And... Um, all they could find for him was a life of Christ and lives of the saints. So he'd kind of dip into them. But he has also let his imagination wander. And he thought of, you know, why he was there anyway, recovering, why he wanted a good straight leg so he could walk proudly ahead and be a man of valor and, you know, a soldier again and, People would look up to him and chivalry and all the, the rest of it, and he would uh, attract a, a lovely lady who would fall in love with him. And, you know, you, wonderful imagines. You can imagine it. And he was imagining all that. And then he was also, because he had a good imagination, putting himself in the lives of saints and saying, what would be like Saint so-and-so? Maybe even St. Dominic. Yes, oh, indeed. Um, and then he began to reflect on what he felt when he thought about his life of chivalry and, you know, carrying on that. And he didn't, he, he wasn't excited about it particularly. But when he thought of following what the saints did, becoming like a saint, he had joy and peace and energy. And after some reflection, yeah, he realized that God was getting at him. And this was 
what followed the cannonball moment, but it took time. It didn't all come at once, his change and change of life. It took him, I think, till you know, July to February, he was at the castle recovering. He could then set out. And where he set out for was um, for Montserrat, again in the north of Spain, a great monastery and a pilgrimage center. And he went there and confessed his sins over three days. And then he spent a night of vigil in the chapel before the famous icon of statue of Our Lady there, Our Lady of Montserrat. And he hung up his sword and his shield and all his military stuff, and he dedicated his life to being a pilgrim. He went to um, Manresa, a town about 30 miles away, and prayed in a cave, begged in the town for almost a year. And in that time, God really spoke to him and convinced him that those feelings of joy he found and peace in following the saints' path were for him, for him, Ignatius of Loyola. So at that stage, he was obviously over 30, and he realized he needed education. And it took him till in his 40s, to go through her education, first sitting in a, you know, a high school with the students and learning, and then uh, eventually in Paris and learning enough philosophy, theology for ordination. He realized that was the way he could follow Jesus best through, through being educated. And while he was at Paris, he gathered some like-minded students there around him and they didn't have the idea of being the Jesuits, but they did have the idea of going to Jerusalem, which was always in the back of his mind, to the Holy Land. God had other plans. They became the nucleus of the Jesuits. And whatever we think, there's 500 years of history then behind all that. What happened to Ignatius? The same that St. Paul in what we read, heard in the Ephesians was talking about. You have heard and were taught in Jesus, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. That was the effect of Ignatius's cannonball moment, to, to, to begin to live that, that new way. And it's that that Jesus in the gospel is trying to tell the people who were fed, the 5,000 men, and we're not counting women and children, who were fed with the bread and, and the fish out in the desert. And that's why they followed him, for the sake of their stomachs. And Jesus is saying, no, it's not your stomachs that's the important thing. It's, good, yeah, it's important to feed people, but ultimately, it's the feeding of the spirit that needs to happen. And that will then change. And so that's why we heard Jesus declaring, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. And so that's for each of us. We may not have a cannonball strike our legs, and I hope it doesn't happen. But you will have probably had something in your life, maybe something relatively small, that made you pause and reflect and say, where am I going? And then find maybe a slightly different path, a path that did bring life, new life, more life. And it's for those we bring before God and are thankful for today. 
I can think of moments. One was concerned with my work as an astronomer when I was doing a, a doctorate from up in Canada. There was a moment that changed everything and I hadn't expected it, the direction my thesis took. That was of God. I did experience a break in 89. I was in a head-on collision in the car as a passenger. I had brakes all up my right side and whatever, nose and everything. And yes, I had to have my finger reset, broken again and reset when I got back to uh, Tucson. It did give me a new perspective, how each day was such a gift from God. And so maybe there are moments in your own life that have come when you've experienced a new feeding, a new refreshment through Jesus, the bread of life.